Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing an unpacking of the Wynn Finch Mortiser. Uh, it's the model number 43012. And I don't know what tools we're going to need. I don't know if tools are in the package or not. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it open with the one tool that I do need. And this box is pretty heavy. So if you are uh, going to be moving this thing around, don't be a tough guy. You only get one back. So take care of it, get some help. I've already ruined my ears with all this loud equipment, so you want to make sure not to do that with your back. So it has some instructions on the top, a uh, little uh, table extension, and metal uh, over there. I've had this sitting around for several months and I haven't had time to get into it, so Hopefully everything's here, and it won't be too much work. I turn it on its side, so I don't have to lift it. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. There's a lot of miscellaneous parts there. Okay, I'll stand this thing up. Take the plastic on. It seems pretty sturdy. Which is good. Has a guard here. different lockdown devices, and there's uh, some Allen wrenches in there. Looks like a box of hardware or something. Oh, this is your chuck. Some of this stuff I'll find out what it is as we move forward. So I left some of these packages intact because there's a lot of small parts. Uh, I did pull out, uh, there were three mortising uh, chisel bits in here. There's a quarter inch, a half inch, and a three eighths bit. I bought a few different sized ones as well. The way these are, if you, if you look at them, they, um, the drill bit part comes out. And you've got this chisel and it fits down in there. And as this thing drills, the, the uh, the bench top mortiser will will hold the square part uh, square, and so that will the drill bit will will ream out the wood, and then the chisel will uh, push a square hole, and you can see there's room for the excess dust and stuff to um, leave through here. So yeah, we got three of those, and uh, yeah. One of the first things that the instruction tells you to do is to clean it off. It has a lot of grease on it, and I've already done that. Uh, it tells you to use some kerosene, not to use lacquer thinner, uh, but the grease was on there just to protect it while it was in storage. I went ahead and uh, started out with some mineral spirits, but realized I didn't even need it, and I was able to wipe it off pretty well with the dry rag. It's powder coated, and uh, so the grease wiped off really well, and uh, it does tell you to protect it later with like a floor wax or something like that. It says in instructions more specifically what you can use. Mm. Okay, so now we're on to the assembly of this. We're going to first put on the handle and it has a handle clutch and it has a spring and a screw inside of there. And you notice it's gonna go into the side that has the holes in it. That's the end it's gonna go into. It has a flat uh, surface, and then it has a surface uh, with a, a place for the, uh, um, the pinion, uh, pinion to rest from the handle, okay? You're gonna to have to take this apart. And I try to keep it organized. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the, uh, not off the end, and then the washer. This one has a smaller hole, so it just fits over here. And then we'll stop on this part of the shaft. And then we have the spring, 
and then I'll uh, wash it with a larger hole in it so it'll rest against the pinion. Okay. Now, when I go to assemble this, uh, right now, as many of you know, uh, there's the coronavirus thing going on, so I'm home and I don't have all the tools that I normally would have access to. Um, I have a screwdriver, a Craftsman screwdriver that I bought a number of years ago. Uh, I now use it for other things because the tip broke off. Um, they didn't honor their lifetime warranty because they made tools with Craftsman printed on the side rather than uh, something more permanent. And over time it wore off. So uh, I have a broken screwdriver that I never replaced. Uh, I might try this one. I don't know, it's kind of skinny. But when we go to put this on, um, it, we have this big screw and it's got a nice slot for a big uh, screwdriver, which this would have been perfect for. Hopefully it'll go tight enough. All right, so when we go to put this on, uh, this this uh, clutch is going to slip over here and there's little notches that line up and you're going to want it to be set up to where you know of course your fingers uh, the grip handle is facing away from you and you're going to slip it in like this. Notice there is a block of wood here it hasn't instructed me to take it off yet I probably could take it off at any time it just kind of held it for packaging we'll take that off later. Now before I put the handle in we're going to go ahead and put the spring and the screw inside of here. And hopefully this works out. I haven't tried it yet. So that screw driver was able to do a good job. I was able to get it nice and tight. Um, the way this, this works is it, 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 it tightens all the way up against the, the metal part there. And the spring in there allows for this, this part to pull out, which will be easier to do once we have the handle on. And I guess that way, it doesn't really matter where you position this in the, uh, the clutch because you'll be able to pull it out because of the string. It's a nice design, I think. So next we're gonna go ahead and insert the handle into here. Okay. And then we will put the larger washer over here, the spring here, the smaller washer there, and then we're gonna go ahead and tighten this nut onto here. And I believe this is an 18 millimeter nut. Um, the three quarter inch standard is a bit uh, sloppy. The 17 is too tight. I don't actually have an 18 here. Um, but the 19 is too big, um, three quarter is too big, uh, 17 is too small. So I, it's, it appears to me that it's probably an 18, but I'm just gonna use a crescent wrench for that. So now I have this firmly assembled, everything is tight. And like I said, you're able to uh, pull this out so you can change the positioning of that handle. And there's also a spring here. So technically you can uh, should be able to pull this out and turn it if you like as well. Um, I also noticed that this, the rubber handle is not glued on or anything. It's, it's kind of, and it does have some of that grease on it. So I'm going to wipe that off a little better later. Um, I don't know. It may not be a big deal, but, uh, it does allow you to position that where you want it, um, as you go to, um, operate it. So next, uh, it tells us to assemble the table. And as you can see, uh, we have a, a, a piece of MDF uh, melamine and it has some uh, countersunk holes on one side. You're gonna obviously want the countersinks to be on top to accept these, these screws, okay? They sit up just a little bit, but once you tighten it down, it's gonna press into that MDF and it'll go a little bit below the surface. Uh, I found these screws in this bag of miscellaneous hardware that had the micro adjustment plate, the fence lock handle, and some Allen wrenches, just miscellaneous things. So that's where you're gonna find these. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, the screws look like uh, Phillips on the drawing, but they're actually, the proper ones are actually these uh, um, flathead screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, assemble this. There's some holes right here on the table. So everything should line up right where it needs to be.
Okay, so now I have the table installed. I went ahead and lined it up flush here so it wasn't a crooked. Uh, you probably, I, I snugged up the screws. You could keep going tighter and tighter. Uh, probably don't want to do that. It doesn't, I mean, it's, it's nice and sturdy. Um, you, you, you probably don't want to be lifting it with this. It's really heavy. If you did that, it would probably rip those screws through, but it serves a purpose. It holds that table in place. This would be an easy table to uh, make again with just some uh, uh, three quarter inch MDF if you ever needed to replace Okay, it. so next we're gonna take the fence assembly. Uh, it has a spring on it. We're gonna take the fence lock handle, which was in that bag uh, that we pulled the screws out of last. Uh, we're gonna take the micro adjustment plate and the micro adjustment knob. This one is going to be put in here. And it's gonna go in the back right here. So this fence is gonna slip in here with this spring intact. It's just gonna allow you to adjust it in and out here. This is gonna slip over top of that, okay? And actually that will allow you, once it's, it's uh, put on there tight, you're gonna be able to tighten this and loosen it to crank that in and adjust it. Um, I noticed that this is here, I'm not sure what this is called, but it's on the shaft here and it's actually in the way. So you're gonna to have to loosen that up and turn it around. Not sure exactly. Um, it's it's gonna be a set stop to set, stop the uh, the uh, depth of, of your, uh, your slot or your hole. And I'm assuming, and uh, I'll put that out of the way so I can put this in. Now you're gonna, um, now the way these work is they can come out like this. So you can tighten it, but then it can also slip free. So when I screw it in, I'm gonna, there's no room to turn it all the way. So I'm gonna have to uh, pull it up and then screw the, uh, the uh, screw into the um, part here. So this one is a little bit tricky to get in. Um, obviously you can only turn it so far to get it started. Um, you, you can't really get the screwdriver into there. So to get it started, I kind of had to hold it down here and pull that up. And then I just had to twist it and spin it like that. And it was a little tricky at first because until the threads caught, it, as you pull that up, you're wanting to pull the whole thing up. So you kind of have to press down here, pull up here, and then turn it to get that to start going tight. Once you get it most of the way tightened, as you can see, you can tighten it with this, lift it up, and then tighten it until it's nice and snug. Then I'm gonna go ahead and um, tighten this set. So when you go to tighten the set screw on the micro adjustment plate, uh, it doesn't really tell you exactly where to position it. But I'm assuming you're never gonna want your fence to be beyond the chuck. You're gonna want, you know, you're probably, like if you're in this area, you know, your bit will, will still hit it. So I figured I, I could go ahead and tighten that here. And then this, this is gonna be used for adjustment to pull that fence this way against that spring. Um, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and compress it just a little bit to where, uh, a place where I'm not even gonna use it, but I'm gonna go ahead and compress it there. This uh, adjuster knob is pretty long. I'm gonna go ahead and put it there, and then I'm gonna use the Allen wrench that is included in the package to tighten this. And once I have this tightened, okay, that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it this way so I can get a little more leverage on there. Tighten it real good. So this plate's now set on here. Now you can loosen this, and then you'll be able to tighten this and that'll pull your fence back to the desired uh, placement. And then this will, this will be able to lock that for a more permanent hold. And it seems pretty sturdy, it's nice. I like how it's designed. Next, I'm going to install the hold down clamp and it comes in its own little uh, bag here. It's wrapped in some foam. Everything as I've been going along, I've been wiping it off because it's got that, it has that grease on it. Like I said, it comes off pretty easy. 
with just a clean rag. And we're once again gonna use this Allen wrench. Uh, it has this shaft here. Now this bar has two flat sides. That allows for the set screw down here to hold it straight. And it also allows for this adjustment uh, knob to also hold it square. And that's gonna keep this square for you. But let's go ahead and uh, drop it down. And I'll just leave it loose for now. I'm gonna slip it in here. And then I'm gonna um, drop that bar down. Uh, now, when that bar goes in there, you can hear it hit the table. It's gonna hit that MDF table. And one thing that I would recommend when you put that in, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the set screw on the side here to lock that in place. But I would recommend uh, go ahead and, and hit the table and then, then just pull it up a little bit. Uh, pull it up maybe a millimeter or so, so that you don't have that bar rubbing on this MDF over time, creating a groove on it. We'll just tighten that once it's in there. So now I have the set screw tightened and I have this in place. As you can see, if you release this knob, you can go up and down. And just remember to keep that flat side uh, positioned to where the set screw goes again. Okay, next I'm gonna install the tool and chisel holder, which is gonna go on the back of this unit. It has, it comes in its bag, a uh, bag by itself, and it has a couple screws, oh, a couple washers. And these are Allen screws, and they actually provide the Allen wrench for that. Uh, it comes in another bag, but you can find it. Uh, the way this works, you're gonna go ahead and touch them up. I would say this is optional, depending on where you're at. Um, if, if it was in my own garage, I would probably want to use this and have those bits readily accessible. Um, you know, as you can see, that doesn't fit this way. And if you did put it in that way, the, your, your, your bit's gonna fall out, uh, but it does fit perfectly this way. Um, I don't know if you, if you buy a, uh, a bit from another company, I don't know how well they're gonna fit in there. I haven't checked my other bits, but uh, these fit in there really nice. So you can keep that plastic cover on there. So we'll go ahead and install this. Um, we'll go ahead and um, put the, the washer and screw in these holes here. It has the holes already there for you. And if you look on the back, there's some holes. So you can put it right in there. So now I have the tool and chisel holder mounted on the back. Um, you know, it's got room for, you know, uh, quite a few different bits. And the next step, it instructs you to mount it to your table. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm in my dining room, uh, just because it was easier to work in here today. Uh, but it does have a little uh, uh, picture. It has a diagram and it shows you the dimensions, where to drill the holes on the table. And I would recommend doing that. It actually is a, a lot more stable than I assumed it would be. The base is kind of small, so I thought this thing would be tipping over, but it's so heavy that it's actually pretty sturdy uh, if you do need to move, move it around. But um, yeah, you should mount this to a bench. Okay, so next we're gonna install the, uh, the chip guard. It's gonna fit on here. And, and obviously right now, there's no room for that. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the block of wood that is keeping this from going up and down. Just gonna take some snips here. Turn that plastic off of there. Might have to raise it up a little or, da or go down a little. Take that off. Nice fluid movement there. Okay, we're going to put this on here. May have to loosen that screw. It's gonna have a Phillips head screw on this side to tighten it. And it looks like a seven millimeter nut on that side. So you're gonna need that. In order to get it on here, you're gonna to have to um, take that nut out a little bit, all the way to the end. So you can span this open. So it'll fit over this. Pull it apart and slip it up on there. 
you look on the opposite side, you have uh, an adjustment or a uh, set screw here. So you want to keep this down low enough that you can uh, access that. And we'll tighten it back here once it's square. Okay, one thing about this guard is it is optional. You don't have to have it. Um, I think um, it, depending on who's using it, it could be if you if you bang into it or something, it wouldn't be too hard to break. So you want to be careful with it. Uh, it can be moved out of the way, and it's also adjustable. It has an inside and outside piece, so you can um, lower this down if you need a, a taller one. Okay, when I started, I was kind of wondering why the chuck was included in a bag and not actually on the unit. And the reason is, is because there's actually a chuck extension. Um, you're gonna be able to put this in here. And if you look up inside here, there's, there's these uh, chuck key holders. So you can keep that chuck key close, okay? And those come off. And when you look inside there, you're gonna be able to see the chuck key. So when you put your bit in, if you have a longer bit, you're gonna be able to put it all the way up inside there and you're gonna be able to tighten that. But if you need this to be lower, if you need your bit to be lower, there's an extension that you can put in there. I'll set that on the side for now, but it looks like we're pretty much done. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put that bit inside here. You need to be careful, it's kind of sharp. You don't wanna cut yourself with that chisel bit. I'll just leave that cover on for now. I'm not going to use this yet today. I'm just getting it set up for now. And then we'll tighten that chuck as you would just a, a normal um, chuck. Okay. One last thing to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and put the covers back on once that bit is tightened. And, oops, I'm gonna go ahead and pop those in. They don't stick real well. Try this on this side. You might need to keep these on the same side they were on. It's a little wonky. I'm not sure if I'm liking that design too much but okay it doesn't seem like they're gonna want to stay too good so come to think of it there is one last thing that we need to do to complete the setup of this we're gonna to need to make sure that the chisel doesn't spin with the bit and so that's what this set screw on the side is for um, the bit spins as you can see it spins inside that chisel and right here we have a set screw and that's gonna hold this outer uh, chisel in place. And so you're gonna wanna square this up, okay? So you can cut a nice square slot. Probably, I, I'm guessing I would probably um, lower it and get it square with that fence. Push that fence out to it, get it squared up to it. Um, that's probably how I would go ahead and do it and, and then tighten that, okay? Once you get it tightened, you're also probably gonna want this in the front. Uh, the instructions say to do that, I guess, so you can see the dirt as, or the dust uh, as it's being uh, um, pulled out of your board. It should be able to come out there. You can take an air nozzle if you need to, blow that out. Um, and I'm guessing with this extension, um, it would, you know, I mentioned that I would probably wanna use that with a regular drill bit uh, because of the length of these. And I think that is actually what it's intended for because if you use this, you're not gonna be able to use that set screw to uh, lock your chisel in place. So this would be used if you uh, wanna use a regular drill bit.
Okay, I haven't used the tool yet, but overall, my impression of it is that it's it's very sturdy. It's nice and heavy. It's all, it's it's well built. Um, I think the guard. Um, I think you're going to have to be careful with it. I think it'd be if you have it up like this and you bumped into it, it would be easy to break. So you got to be careful. I'm not sure that I like the design of these. After I pulled them out uh, and put them back in, they don't want to stay in real well. So I I, I don't know long term if these are even going to be used. Uh, it's nice because you can put your chuck key in there. Um, but as I've tried to mess around with it and tried to put these in, they kind of want to fall out ever since I've taken them out. I think you almost have to make sure you keep, keep them in the same side that you took them out of because if that hole is even slightly different, like this one's real loose on this side. Um, um, other than that, it's really good. Uh, I don't like the short table, but I mean, this is a bench top one. I, I would probably, uh, in my shop, I'd probably put some extensions that are the same height for longer boards and things like that. Um, maybe later I'll have an opportunity to make a video with this thing set up and using it. Uh, but until then, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned whether or not you might want to get one of these.